Salt water. My favorite kind of sodium chloride. I should give Assistant Neon a call. She does a great job of running the lab when I'm not there. I knew I left you there. Let's see, I need another one, same size, and uh, oh, this one is perfect. I wonder if Professor World will let me borrow some of the good beakers. Oh. Speaking of Professor World. Hi, Professor World. It's lucky you caught me. I just got to the lab. Oh, perfect timing. Uh, I won't be in the lab today due to needing to be in the field. Is that the beach behind you? That's where the field is today. I'm gonna be collecting saltwater specimen, collecting all the sodium chloride I can. You can cover all my experiments for today, right? Oh, that's right. Com mentioned you'd be sending us some saltwater samples for us to experiment with. Uh, I better get the lab prepped while we wait for your samples to arrive. See you later, Professor. I hope Professor remember to bring sunscreen to the field this time. We're all out of aloe vera. I don't know how I'm going to wait for Professor World's saltwater samples to arrive before I can start experimenting. Oh, I want to science now. Well, I suppose if you really want salt water immediately, we could see if Saltius is available to help. Of course! Why didn't I think of that? Calm, you're brilliant. Oh, stop. Okay, so why don't I set up our first experiment while you track down Saltius? Aye, aye, Captain. For our first experiment, we are going to see if salt water can conduct electricity. As you can see here, I've created a closed circuit that an electrical current can run through. Electricity works by harnessing the power of electrons, which are little particles that orbit the core of every atom. In some materials, the electrons hold a very loose orbit, which allows them to hop from one atom to another. These materials that hold their electrons loosely are called conductors. Most metals are strong conductors, so I wrapped popsicle sticks with aluminum foil to make my electrodes. So we have one of our electrodes connected to the negative side of the light, and our other electrode is connected to the battery pack, which is connected to the positive end of the light. When the electrodes touch, the voltage from the battery causes those loose flowing electrons to start moving in the same direction. Now if this current passes through something like a light bulb, it lights up. If the flow is disrupted, it creates what's called an open circuit. Air isn't a good conductor, so the flowing electrons suddenly have nowhere to go. The current is broken and the light goes out. See, closed, open, closed, open. Now what do you think will happen if we try to send those electrons through a bowl of water? Oh, and remember, I'm a scientist, so if you wanna try this experiment at home, make sure to ask an adult for help. Let's get to it. <gasps> Look, no light. Seems that water isn't a very good conductor of electricity and the electrons can't seem to flow in it. But I wonder if it'll change when we add Saltius? Perfect timing. I found Saltius binging an anime in the other room. Still salty about how the last season ended, huh? Oh, well, maybe this will distract you. Saltius, could you please add a dash of salt to my bowl of water? <gasps> Look, it's working. Uh, but the light isn't very bright. Hmm. Saltius, can you add a bit more salt? The more salt Saltius adds, the brighter the light gets. Do you know why this works, Com? I may have a theory. Well, great. I think it's time for chemistry with Com. To explain why salt water conducts electricity, it is important to remember that salt is comprised of two chemical elements, sodium and chlorine. Sodium symbol is Na, and its atomic number is 11. Chlorine symbol is Cl, and its atomic number is 17. It looks like the salt crystals are dissolving in the water. 
Does that mean that the salt sodium chloride atoms are separating from each other? That's exactly what that means. And when the sodium and chloride atoms get pulled apart, the sodium atoms lose an electron. And the chloride atoms gain an extra electron. Hmm. So when atoms gain or lose electrons, it gives them an electrical charge, right? So now the sodium atoms are negatively charged and the chloride atoms are positively charged? Exactly. An atom with an electric charge is called an ion. Ah, I think I get it now because opposite charges attract. So the positive ions start moving towards the negative end of my battery and the negative ions start moving towards the positive end, creating a flowing current. Yes, all those loose flowing electrons are suddenly forced into moving in the same direction, resulting in a closed circuit, resulting in light. And the more salt you add to the water, the more powerful the current of electrons becomes, meaning the brighter the light will shine. You're right, eye on the money. Huh, right back, Adam, you. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot Saltius does not like it when we speak in puns. <gasps> Could it be? Water solution just came in. Yes, Saltius. That means you can get back to your show. Thank you for your help. Thank you, Saltius. Okay, Calm. We've got our real life, authentic seawater straight from the ocean. That means it's time for experiment number two. Now, for our first experiment, we learned what can happen when you add salt to water. For this next experiment, the professor wants us to see if we can remove the salt from the water. <gasps> to do this, we are going to try boiling the seawater that Professor World sent us. The professor's theory is this. If we boil the salt water, all the water will evaporate, leaving nothing behind but the salt. Let's see if this works. To begin, we let the salt water that the professor sent us sit for a couple hours so that all the heavy sediment settled at the bottom. We'll use the water on top because it should be relatively pure seawater. Then we'll see what happens when we add heat. Now I'll set the burner to high and let it cook down for a bit and then we'll see if the professor's theory was correct. I hope you're not using my favorite pot. Uh, no. Hmm, I didn't think about how long this would take. <sighs> if only I would have gotten the name of the anime that Saltius was binging. Whoa, hey, come close, check it out. You can see the top layer is actually starting to form a big salt crystal. <gasps> Incredible, isn't science fun? about half an hour, but look. There's no more water at all. It dispersed into the air as steam, and now all that we're left with in the pot is salt. Well, this salt that remains isn't exactly like the stuff you buy from a grocery store, but if we scrape it out and grind it up, it'll pretty much be indistinguishable from just regular old plain Jane table salt. And just like that, we've extracted genuine sea salt straight from the ocean itself. The professor's theory was correct. You can extract salt from salt water just by boiling. Oh, hey, calm. By the way, what did Professor World want us to do with this salt once we've extracted it? He just messaged me saying he wants us to store the extracted salt in a safe location. He suggested that we distribute it evenly in the pink container he left out for us near the microwave. Oh, okay. Um, the only pink container I found near the microwave uh, is already filled with popcorn and, uh... Oh... Hmm. It seems like this is less of a science experiment and more of a snacking experiment. Well, at least there's plenty to go around. Come on, Calm, let's salt this popcorn and join Saltius for a good old-fashioned anime binge. 
surprised the world can join us when he gets back from the beach. I'll initiate the light dimming sequence and the air conditioning protocol. And I'll upload myself into the fuzziest, wuzziest PJs. Oh, that sounds so good. Well, that's it for Professor World. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.